This week on Command N, why you should email your mother, quick fixes for the iPhone, and cooking with Linux. Welcome to episode 154 of Command N. I'm Amber. I'm Will Pate. And Will, it's kind of funny because last week I was joking about how excited I was to get in my puffy coat for the winter with the big fur hood, and here we are. Ask and you shall receive. I know. Overnight the weather has changed, but we're not complaining, and we have some top secret locations where we'll be shooting throughout the winter. And I do have to mention that we have a new sponsor for the next couple of episodes. This episode is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is one of the best places to get audio downloads. Now, you can get a free download. All you have to do is go to audiblepodcast.com slash command N. That's audiblepodcast.com slash command N for one free download, any download that you like. And Will, I have to say, Audible is very cool. They've been a sponsor on Net at Night for a very long time. Mm -hmm. We absolutely love them. And it's a great place to get all of your audio books so that throughout the winter especially, you can just chill out, stay indoors, and stay warm. I'm a big fan of audio books and a big fan of Audible. All right. Let's talk about the tech headlines of the week. So our first story this week is that a recent Pew Internet study found out that uh, people are using technology to stay better connected within their household and with family members who are uh, far away. So I think that's really cool because that was kind of always the promise of the internet, that it would keep us all more connected. Turns out it's working. So it's working. It's actually keeping families together instead of tearing them apart, which is you know, what we hear sometimes, especially in the news. Mm. That's great stuff. Now, if you are on the internet and you want a way to be able to get free screen captures, there's a new tool that's just launched. It's called ScreenToaster.com, and it allows you to capture anything on a screen, and then you can actually upload that video online, and you can embed the video and send someone a link to the video. Now, the only thing is, there's no specific word on when you'll be able to actually export export out of ScreenToaster.com, but it's still a very cool tool. Next up, a new music service is launched called La La with 10 cent songs. Now the catch though is that the songs are only 10 cents, but you put some in a playlist and you can only play it in a browser. So it, you're not going to get as good song quality, but it's still pretty cool. That is very cool. See, we have two things that are all browser based. People are trying to tie us into the browser. But you know, sometimes we want freedom from the browser, don't we, Will? Yeah. I too will join the cult. I want an iPhone. Our next story is for iPhone lovers out there. Now, if you love the iPhone, but you're a little bit frustrated about some of the things that don't work as well as you'd like, there's a site called pleasefixtheiphone.com. It's become very, very popular, so there's a listing of all the problems with the iPhone. You also have an opportunity to add to this list, and it shows things that are fixed on the list. So one of those things, for example, would be copy and paste on the iPhone. I know you're an iPhone user, Will, so uh, what do you think? It's a good site? Oh, yeah, it's great. I really want copy and paste, too. <laughs> yes, that's very cool. A research team in Switzerland has actually figured out how to uh, analyze the electromagnetic waves that wired keyboards make, and they can tell in real time what people are typing. So keyboards are secure. Will, that's terrifying. I know. I read this today, and I was like, uh, so what's the solution? That's very interesting, though. Lots of uh, good tidbits of news coming out on the internet. Now, this next piece of news, don't worry, I'm not going to bore you with Britney Spears, but Britney Spears has joined Twitter. Like many celebrities who are realizing this social media tool might be helpful to them. But what I think is really interesting is that Gary Vee, who we love, has done an awesome video where he's giving advice to Britney on Twitter. So we're going to leave you with that. Now, Ma, this is a problem. Social media is about authenticity and about realness. When you say things like, oh my God, seven hours until Womanizer premieres, did you say that? Did your team say that? Did your website say that? That is the problem. Hi, I'm Jeff MacArthur. Before proceeding to my tech tip, I'd just like to remind everyone that this week's episode is brought to you by Audible.com, the leading provider in spoken word entertainment. Audible has over 35,000 titles to choose from to be downloaded and played back anywhere, just like Command N. And there's not just audiobooks at Audible. There's audio newspapers, audio magazines, comedy, radio, and lots more. So log into audiblepodcast.com slash Command N, that's all one word, Command N, to get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. 
That's audiblepodcast.com slash command N for your free audiobook. Now this week's tech tip is about deciding whether you should get an infrared remote or an RF remote. IR or infrared remotes became popular in the early 80s and are the most common type of remote out there today. Basically, when you hit a key on your IR remote, it fires off an infrared flash sequence that is picked up by an IR receiver on the device and decoded on the receiving device, whether that's a TV, a stereo, some, a properly equipped computer, or whatever. The problem is that for this signal to get through, there's got to be a direct unobstructed path between the infrared remote and that little receiver window on your device. And you also can't even be too far off center. So using your IR remote to control your television in the next room, not gonna happen. Now an RF or radio frequency remote typically has more range than an IR remote and it can send a signal through walls or other objects such as the wall of a cabinet that you might have your stereo devices in without any difficulty. An RF signal can be subject to some interference from phones or appliances or other wireless devices, but this isn't normally a problem in most common environments. And while infrared remotes can also be subject to interference from fluorescent lights or even sunlight, again, not a problem in most environments. That said, RF is usually the choice to make if you're looking for a setup outdoors, since there's no potential for light interference and typically the range is better. So one big plus of IR remotes is that you can program them. You can use an IR universal remote to control a bunch of other components, which can be really helpful if you've got a big home theater system. In fact, this ends up being the deciding factor, I'd say, for most people. So do you want an IR remote that you can use across multiple components, but only directly in front of your home theater system? Or do you want an RF remote that you can use anywhere in your house? The choice is yours, and that's it for this week. I'm Jeff MacArthur. Enjoy. Our web picks this week are sponsored by GoDaddy. If you go to GoDaddy, you can sign up for any of their hosting packages, and you get an extra 10% off if you enter the promo code COMMAND10. That's the number one and the number zero. All right, Will, what is your web pick of the week? My web pick this week is a service called Domainer, and what it does is it searches, you type in a word you want a domain for, it searches through like hundreds of top level domains, all those crazy international domains, and helps you find one of those really weird uh, domains, like Domainer itself is domain.nr, so that kind of stuff. So if you've got a cool website or a crazy web 2.0 Ajax mashup crazy thing, you want a funny name for it, uh, check out Domainer. Yeah, especially because so many of the .com domains are gone, so it's a good option for people who are out there. Now, my web pick is WFTL Bytes, which is a great show. It's a video podcast that is done by a friend of mine. Your host, Marcel Gagne. And uh, he does an awesome job. He talks all about Linux and open source software. And he just started the show a little while ago. We'd like to uh, you know, promote our friends and also good content. We don't have a lot of Linux content on the show, so I think it's important to uh, take a look at what he's doing. Let's start with Grok Law. Grok Law today has a report from Microsoft's Horatio Guterres, I hope I've got Horatio's name pronounced correctly, um, where he basically threatens to sue any company, including a company like Red Hat, that fails to sign a licensing deal of the type that Novell signed with them. That's it for this episode of Command M. We want to say again that we welcome our new community manager, Snowball. You'll be seeing him online. He'll be talking about the show, behind the scenes, things from the show that we may be embarrassed about, but uh, we've invited him here, so what are you going to do? Uh, live with it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to live with it. As always, if you have any comments, leave them at commandn.tv. We're always in the comments, even more so now with Snowball and the rest of the team. So thanks for watching and have a great week. But God, this thing is sweet. A multi-touch iPod Wi-Fi phone.